All right, here we go. Um, the probably one and only episode I'm going to do of Kingdom Death, and we're going to do Old Joe. So we're going to take this uh, ugly piece of plastic and turn to this easy beauty with some simple, easy steps, as long as you follow what I'm doing. Um, so without uh, further ado, let's uh, let's go. Obviously, start off by assembling Old Joe. I followed the Kingdom Death Monster website, which isn't exactly the most descriptive, which is kind of annoying, because you gotta kind of figure out how to place certain parts in there. Um, but I followed that, and I'll post that in the comments below. I'm using regular plastic glue, which for some reason, these resin models, or whatever the hell they are, ain't working so well so it works but it takes a minute to set unlike if you use it on a Warhammer uh, miniature it works right away so you got to kind of hold it in place um, but I'm following the instructions and not having a great time building this model while doing it using regular old super glue to glue the base together and I'm also going to use it on the feet of the old Joe to glue him onto it prior to putting down the texture surface that we're going to do here in the next couple steps coming up. So just put that super glue on those feet and you're going to have to put the, the feet down on the base, obviously. And uh, you're going to have to hold it in for about 15-25 seconds. Just hold it there and let the super glue set. I know this is pretty uh, fundamental, but whatever. Uh, and let that fully set for, I think I let it sit for an hour or so. You don't, probably don't need that long, but I did anyways. All right, the first uh, thing we're gonna be doing after we glue it together is gonna be putting down some texture just on the base. And we are going to be doing uh, Vallejo's Earth Texture. You can use whatever you want. I just use this because it's uh, cheaper and I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm gonna put one layer of Nolan Oil at the end on it and that's it, just because I did whatever. All right, the first base color, Bugman's Glow. And we're gonna be putting that on the face, the hands, the arms, the legs, the feet, um, the chest, the abdomen, the back. We're gonna be going all over this model. Um, and make sure we're thinning our paints, like I've said in all my videos. Make sure it has a nice milky consistency. It's better to do two to three layers of paint rather than one thick one, because it's gonna look like crap. So make sure you're uh, cruising around and you're getting all these. Um, I think it took two layers. And as you can see, I primed it. And if you uh, want to know how I primed it, watch my priming video um, on my channel. And it'll show you how to do the zenithal highlighting. As this is kind of imperative for this actual model. Um, and it makes it really kind of come out without doing a lot of shade. So just make sure, if you make uh, some mistakes while doing this, um, it's not that big of a deal. Um, we're gonna go back and you can go back over with the other colors if you get it on somewhere it's not supposed to be. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but just to make sure you get everything. Um, I had to check it a couple times because I missed a couple spots. But that's basically it. For the beard, we're gonna be using Zandri Dust. No, no, if you look at the picture of the character, you're like, oh, his beard's gray uh, from the beginning of the video, it, which it is. Um, we're going to be just doing a light undercoat of Zandri dust, followed by a wash, followed by all gray highlights. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you some contrast of, oh, he was young once, but now he's old because he's old Joe, right? 
So just go ahead and slap that Xandu just on everything in his hair. And if you make a mistake, Bugman's glow it up on the face. Make sure you get the eyebrows. I had to go back and do this. Um, but make sure you get those eyebrows. Use a smaller brush. I used a bigger brush and obviously you can see that, ah, it looks like crap. I had to go back and use a smaller brush off camera. Uh, so use a size 10 zero brush. And as you can see here, I'm going back with some Bugman's Glow to fix what I messed up because it was, uh, I got it everywhere. But hey, in this stage, mistakes happen. For the front sash, skirt, I don't know what this is. <clears throat> Teller and sand, um, front and back. Um, and just pretty simple. Cruise around, get the front back, make sure you get the bottom of it. And that's uh, basically it. For the staff, I'm using Mechanicus Standard Gray. Um, there's what I believe to be teeth on there. I don't know if they're actually teeth. You can go over it, but we're going to go over that with uh, Rack Hearth Flesh here in a little bit. And then the bottom, there's more teeth, and it looks like leather wrap. So you can go over it because you're just going to go over it with another paint, but just slap it on there real quick. For the leather wraps on the legs, hands, the bottom portion of the staff, uh, we're going to be using Mornfang Brown. Um, again, if you make a mistake while painting this, cruise back over with that Bugman's Glow or Talleran Sand or whatever else you need, the Mechanics Standard Gray, just to do a little touch up. That's why I use a wet palette because, hey, it doesn't get dry very quickly and you can just easily clean your brush and go back over it. Working smarter, not harder. All right. For the inner part of the lantern, we're going to be using just regular white from Vallejo or Citadel or P3 or whatever you got. Uh, just regular white. Um, now you can see that there's like a, uh, markings from the lantern and whatnot, and we should probably go over those with uh, something else, but I'm going to make it kind of a glowy effect with no OSL or anything. I could have done that, but that would have taken so much longer and this video would have been an hour. I just don't have that kind of time, so just regular white. For the lantern, we're using Iron Warriors from Citadel. You can use Lead Belcher, you can use whatever uh, other type of silver you have. Uh, I just like Iron Warriors because it's kind of like a darker silver and this is a dark game. Um, I really enjoy that, that paint. So, front, back, top, bottom, and the chains are on the actual uh, front of his sash or whatever it is. For the teeth on the staff, starting with the bottom and the top, we're picking them out with some Rackarth flesh. I don't even know if these are teeth or not. They look teethish to me. And in Kingdom Death Monster, you're hunting monsters. So you would figure there'd be teeth and claw and something else. I don't know. I've seen a different a ton of different types of old Joe's painted. Some of them have like teeth painted on there. Some of them have like uh, rocks or I, I don't know. So, hey, I picked Rackcar Fletcher. If you didn't like, if you don't agree with what I'm doing, change it to something else. Um, but top, bottom, and you're picking out the ones at the top. And I kept finding ones that I had to keep painting. I thought I I got them all, but I had to keep going. I had to keep going back <clears throat> to find other ones. So just pick them out real quick. You make a mistake, mechanic standard gray it back over. Easy. For the inside of the lantern, we're using Lamenters Yellow from Citadel. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because this is a super easy way to get a yellow into something like this for a lantern without doing a bunch of OSL. If you don't have this, use the wash from Citadel or a different type of yellow wash.
um, the base color colors are done. We're going to be doing a wash here. And I don't know why my picture didn't come up when I took it. But it's Reichland Fresh Flesh Shade. There we go. From Citadel. And we're going to slap this all over the flesh portions. Don't worry if you get it into the beard or onto the sash or the whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Um, we're just going to go over it with some Agrax Earth Shade. That's the only other shade we're using after this, so it's not a big deal. Um, so just make sure you get it all on there, and don't be uh, don't be cheap on putting it on there. Go ahead and give it a nice liberal coat. Just make sure you get the facial expressions with a good amount of it so it's when you're looking at it you can see that the shade's seeping into the eyes, under the nose, under the eyebrows, and on top of the eyebrows, as you can see right here. For the rest of the model, we're giving it a liberal coat of Agrax Earth Shade. You can throw some Nolan Oil on the lantern if you want. I was just somewhat being lazy and trying to save some time by cutting a little bit of corners by just doing it all on the entire model. Uh, it doesn't, it's not going to have a crazy adverse effect if you use no oil on it or if you just want to use Agrax Earth Shade. Um, I just wanted to do one shade to save time basically. So just cruise around the model, all the wraps, the hair, the staff, the sash, the lantern, the all that stuff. We're going to cruise around and give it a nice coating of Agrax Earthshade. There were some points that I added some extra Agrax Earth Shade to certain spots that have deep recesses, like on the back of the sash and the hair on the front of the sash, because I really wanted that to have a lot of depth and um, contrast. So don't be scared to give it some extra on the back, especially after it dries in the first coat it is not what you want it to be. Hey, add a second coat, give it some more depth, we're going to be doing a dry brush on it here, so I don't think you're going to be upset at all with the, with the outcome of the product. All right, first thing we're gonna be doing is gonna be the eyes. Get to grab a small brush, I'm using a size 10, and we're gonna be using some black from Vallejo, but use whatever you got, just a regular black, and we're gonna be painting in basically the black behind the eyeball, the white eyeball. This is my technique I use for all eyes, and it works pretty well. Uh, it's not the best, but it works for me, because it's hard, in my opinion. As you can see, quick, easy black eyes, and then we're going to be switching to the white. I'm using white from Vallejo, but again, use whatever white you got. And as you can see on the miniature, the curvature of the orbital, or the eye, is sticks out decently. So same brush, I'm using a size 10 brush, just go over that real light over the white portion, and you should have what looks like two eyeballs sticking out. But be very careful, put both elbows on the ground or on the table and be steady. For the pupil, I'm using black, um, but you can use a different color. If you wanna give them blue eyes, cause you're like, oh, it's gonna look good. It's gonna be sparkly. Then use a blue, but I'm just using black. Real quick, dot onto the eye. Try not to make them cross-eyed, so look towards the middle of the eye to do it. Both elbows on the table should be able to accomplish it. All 
All right, we are starting with the highlights of the skin. Uh, this is probably the most time consuming portion of this model is doing the skin and making the highlights on the skin. We're gonna be doing a reapplication of Bugman's Glow. And you wanna hit the top of the head, the nose, under the eyeballs, so the cheeks. And we're gonna be going around all of the raised surfaces of this model. The face is probably the most crucial portion because that is the focal point of the miniature. When you're looking at the miniature and people are looking at the miniature, everyone's gonna be staring at the face and the facial features. So you want as much contrast as possible. Make sure we're thinning our paints very carefully. I'm using a small brush to do this um, because we're gonna be getting the fingers, um, the toes, and we're gonna be building up those highlights in phases by mixing different colors and just easily going over this. But Bugman's Glow, one, maybe two layers if you uh, want to, but just hit those raised areas, keep those uh, crevices shaded and just get the raised areas as you can see. Once it's dry, you can see that there's already some contrast from the shaded Bugman's Glow versus the fresh layer Bugman's Glow. But we're gonna, we're gonna amp that up. All right, take one brush full of Bugman's Glow and one brush full of Canadian Flesh Tone. We're gonna mix those together. That's gonna be our early mid-tone, I guess you could say. And drop a water with it as well, or a brush full of water. Start by using a small brush. I use a size 10, like I said before. On the nose, the cheek, and the top of the head. The thing to think about is where is the sun hitting and where is the reflection in the lightest part of the skin gonna go. Um, the face is gonna have a ton because it's gonna be the closest point to the sun from the ground. Even though in Kingdom Death there is no sun. So does that even make any sense? It doesn't. But it's gonna look good in the end and that's all that really matters. Um, so hit the top of the heads. Make sure you get the ear on the left side. I don't think he had an ear on the right side. And we're gonna be hitting the tops of the shoulders, the biceps, the abs, the top of the leg, the feet. And we're gonna be cruising all around. So, uh, and the fingers, make sure you get the fingers as well. And just take your time and enjoy the paint. I switched back to my size one, two, one brush to get the larger portion. It's just to kind of speed it up a little bit. But the tops of the shoulders, you want to do them in segments. So if you see like in the arm or on the top of the shoulders where the bicep meets the shoulder, that crevice, keep that there and just go over it and don't slap it all on. Just follow what I'm doing and do portions of it and we're gonna be doing less and less each time make sure you hit the uh, abdomen this is a ripped old man I mean it is kingdom death so he probably only eats meat doesn't eat ice cream or delicious alcohol specifically a cold beer out of a beer bong which I love so he's in shape he's probably he's probably 32 when he looks 80 um, but you're just hitting those uh, muscles to make them stand out more. And like I just said, less and less each time. Um, top of the leg, top of the feet. And it looks a little crappy right here, but we're gonna, as we put more layers on, it looks, starts to look better and better. For the third layer of skin, uh, Cadian Flesh Tone, obviously wet palette mixed with some water, milky consistency, and nose, 
cheeks, top of the head, broken record. The less we do are now, we're doing littler, uh, that doesn't make any sense. We're doing small increments, smaller portions each time we put a new layer on. So we're building that highlight, we're building the contrast, and make sure you're getting the same spots we just hit, but just a smaller surface area, if that makes any sense. So if we went 100% with the original Bugman's Glow, the next two tones we mix together, we're doing 80%. And Kitty and Flesh Tones are doing 60%. We're just doing littler portions to build that entire tone up. And make sure we're mixing those paints. That's the crucial part of making sure that they're watered down a little bit. Again, switch back to the bigger brush for the top of the shoulders. The sun's gonna hit the top of the shoulders and the top of the head, so that's gonna be your brightest points um, in the bicep and on top of the hands. So I switch back to my bigger brush just to make it speed by a little bit quicker, and that's basically it. We are now mixing the Cadian Flesh Tone and Kislev Flesh 50-50 mix with a couple brushfuls of water. And we are gonna continue to bring down the amount of surface area we're gonna be painting. Again, the nose, the cheekbones, the top of the head, the shoulders, the hands, the thigh, the left thigh that is sticking out, and top of the feet and toes. And now we're at a 40%, so 40% surface area. If at any point you're painting like, oh gosh, this looks terrible, it's too strong, let the paint dry because when you originally put on, it's super strong and then as it dries, it doles down. So you're fine, don't go in a panic, don't try and jump out a window or anything, it'll look fine, trust me. For the last highlight, we're just using pure kibble of flesh, obviously watered down. And we're doing the nose, cheekbones, and a little bit above the eyebrows. And a little bit from the hands, and that's it. We're basically done with uh, the flesh, and we just want to put a little pieces of highlight that is going to make it stand out just a little bit. For the sash, front sash, we're gonna be doing some dry brushing and this is gonna look pretty decent the way it's gonna turn out. It doesn't take any time. We're gonna be using Bane Blade Brown and do as I'm doing, get your paper towel, wipe it on the paper towel, make sure you don't have as much on there. And we're just gonna dry brush the top portions of the skirt, kilt, sash. I don't know what it is. Um, 300 skirt from the Trojans. Leonidas thing, mm -hmm. um, and just dry brush the front and back. Um, I went over it a couple times uh, just to make it come out a little bit more, but real light, it's real hard to mess up a dry brush. Just don't have too much paint on there. Get most of your paint out and just go over it 
20, 30 times and it'll come out and it'll make it look good. And we're gonna do a couple layers of this mixed in with the final highlight that we're gonna do next. For the last highlight of the dry brush on the sash, we're gonna be using deck tan from Model Color. Um, you can use something else like you shot the bone if you have Citadel or like a comparable color. And this is gonna be a real light dry brush. Get all that paint off your brush and just go over it nice and neat. Um, real light and we're gonna be picking out the topmost portions of the sash where the light is gonna hit. Make sure to get that, that top part and you can hit the bottom portions a little bit, but real light, go over it, it doesn't take much. Don't overdo the paint on your brush, get it all off, rub it into the, your paintbrush, get it onto that paper towel and just go over it real light and it makes it look actually really good for not a lot of steps. The next dry brush we're gonna be doing on the hair is Dawnstone. Again, get all that paint off your brush, just have a little bit worked into there, and we're gonna be getting the hair. So be careful, because obviously we just did the skin, so real light over. If you have some brown sticking out, that's exactly what we want. So just real light over the hair, um, the beard, the mustache, and just go over real lightly, and be just very careful when you're going over it. And you don't have to overdo it, just a little bit here and there, and it's gonna give us a contrast. We're gonna go for the next colors. We're gonna start picking out strands of hair, uh, administratum gray. And we're picking out strands of hair and just quickly going over them. Um, leave some of the brown, leave some of the Dawnstone, but hit some of those hairs and we're gonna be going back over them with another lighter highlight. Those same hairs you picked out with the uh, last gray, Lotharian gray, Citadel, pick them out again. It's gonna look real bright once you put it on and you kinda want that transition of he's getting older even though we think he's 32, uh, but he does live in Kingdom Death and we're gonna be giving him even darker, or sorry, lighter colored gray hair. I'm using Iron Breaker for the chain and the lantern top. Um, hit the edges on the lantern and hit the top portions of the chain and just real light, give us some contrast. Um, let's give it a little bit of flow. For the top portions of the leather on the hands, feet, and the bottom of the staff, we're going to be using Doom Bowl Brown. Just hit the top portions of the wraps, so you wanna leave some of that washed brown on the recesses, recesses, there you go. And we're gonna be using Doom Bowl Brown for the top portion of it. For the staff, we're just gonna be doing a dry brush of long beard gray. And that'll give it enough contrast to make it look good. And if you get some onto the teeth of the Rakhar flesh we already painted on there, it's no big deal because we're about to go back over it again.
for the teeth. You shop the bone, um, just pick out all the teeth, do most of the surface area for the teeth. And then the next highlight we're gonna do, we're just gonna be doing the tips of it just to kind of give it that gradual highlight. Um, after the shabdi bone, we're gonna be using Screaming Skull and just put the tip portions of the teeth as Screaming Skull. And for the second to last part, uh, I'm just doing a coat of Nolan Oil. You can do two coats for the uh, texture we have on the bottom, but that's all I'm doing. I could care less about the bottom. Uh, and then I'm gonna be doing black around the edges. And that's gonna be it. And we just completed a model that didn't take us a whole lot of time, didn't have a lot of colors, but looks fantastic, as you can see right here. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I think you should be pretty happy with it because it looks pretty freaking good for uh, the amount of work we put into it. It's not overly complicated, it doesn't have any OSL, but you put that on the table and panties are dropping, if you know what I mean. I just want to say thank you everybody for watching. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into these videos and a lot of time. And I want to grow this channel as much as possible. So if you can, spread the word, post it on forums, social media. If you like what you see, please subscribe if you are watching this for the first time and are not subscribed. I try and pump out at least one video a week, sometimes more, sometimes less. Um, follow me on the Instagram at nerd.nights where I'm always posting new stuff and upcoming things coming out. Um, but thank you so much for watching and please subscribe and like this video and I hope you have a great day and you continue to follow me. So, uh, all right, paint on.